So we're trying to prove that these functions are inverse functions to one another. So we remember that it has to be that the inverse of h of h of x has to equal has to equal x. So we're just going to plug this in. I'm going to take this inverse function here. I'm just going to set it up. I'm going to say that plus 3 cubed. And then I'm going to plug in my h of x function. I'm going to take the cubed root of x minus 3. Whoops, this should be cubed, shouldn't it? That works out good, doesn't it? Negative 3 plus 3 is 0, which leaves us with the cubed root of x cubed equals x. That's our proof. What about this one? This one we had we saw for the inverse and we said that the inverse of g of x was equal to 1 over x plus 2. What does that look like? It's not going to be as pretty, is it? So I'm just going to set up the shell, set this part up first and say that the inverse of g of that thing I'm going to plug in here is equal to 1 over x plus 2, right? We said we're going to plug in g of x, so there's g of x, and g of x is this value right here, isn't it? Plug this in, 1 half minus 2. God bless you, whoever's over there hiccuping. So we get 1 over 1 over x. Everybody okay with this math? Exactly, right? So this is a complex fraction, isn't it? So I look at this as if it was a complex fraction. Bring this thing up exactly, Brandon, as if it was its reciprocal. Solve that, and we get is equal to x. One more. This one is the inverse of h of x was equal to the cubed root. This one's prettier, isn't it? x minus 3 all over 2. Going to do the same thing here. Set up this outside piece. Say this is the inverse function of something. I'm going to set this thing up. Here is where the x goes, minus 3 all over 2. And here we're going to get 2x cubed plus 3. Everybody see how this simplifies out? These parentheses come down, this 3 and this 3 cancel, don't they? We get 2x cubed over 2, cube root of that whole thing, Brandon. So it simplifies out as the cube root of x cubed equals x. Good enough? All right.